It's Christmas time again! What other way to celebrate Christmas than to make a marathon of videos? Oh boy. So let's talk about YouTube for a second. But let's get more in detail. Let's talk about the creators on YouTube. There's so many different types of creators on this site. There's vlogs, personal rants, video game let's plays, music videos, school projects, and many more different videos. I've been on this site for about a good 8 years, so I kinda know the stuff that goes on this site. And ever since I came onto this site, it has dramatically changed. We went from basic vlogs with no editing. Every time I say alliteration, every time I do any sort of alliteration from now on. To vlogs where they end up being highly edited. This morning is daddy daughter swim class. Going swimming. We even went from basic video game let's plays fueling uh, furnaces. Now, I am a coal man. To video game let's plays to where they now have to be highly edited as well. Told me that the world is gonna roll me. <laughs> Ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. But you will always have your weird content like this. content on YouTube has always evolved so much over time, whether if it's for the best or for the worst. Now in this day on YouTube, it's a lot harder to get noticed on YouTube for the work you do. The content is basically being overshadowed by a bunch of creators like this. Uh, can I have Jake Paul merch? And he won't shut the f And this. I read it up fast, I feel like the flash. You can see I'm getting mad, bringing up the path. But considering that it's the time of Christmas again, and you guys are probably thinking, Thunder, if you're calling my daily Jake Paul content trash, then what sh do you watch? Well, little Jimmy, I'm here to tell you the YouTubers I like to watch when I'm bored. Now, you will have two reactions. You will either tell me, Thunder, you watch some interesting content. I'll subscribe to them. Or, you'll tell me, Thunder, you watch some sh YouTubers. Go kill yourself. Without further ado, let's begin with the strip of 12 days of what I think are one of the best YouTubers, in my opinion. Let's start off with this YouTuber that not many of you will know. He is Welcome to Internet. For those who have watched my videos, he's made an appearance on my channel. <coughs> Strike Podcast. But we're not here to talk about my podcast, thank you very much. Let's talk about his channel and what he has to offer. Before his channel went into inactivity, he used to upload videos on the days Tuesday through Friday, ranging from four series. What I'll do is that considering this four series on his channel, I'll take a look at each and every individual series, and I'll give a brief description, and I'll let you decide whether you want to check them out or not. Every Tuesdays he made a podcast episode in which he talked about really anything ranging from YouTube to politics to movies to, well, you name it. Sure, they weren't the highest quality videos on his channel, but it's meant as something to supplement for any videos that he's working on. Welcome to Do Like Such a Perfect Time! On Wednesdays, he uploads an episode of a series called F***ing Idiots, in which he gathers tweets and talks about the stupidity of the human race and how they tweet out the most stupidest things on the face of the planet. Either that, or he'll sometimes pick videos instead and talk over them and the stupidity there is. Each and every one of these episodes are always entertaining to watch, and actually, it doesn't surprise me to see him pull off many tweets because, well, our world is kinda confusing if I'm completely honest. On Thursdays, he uploads an episode of a series called In My Arrogant Opinion, in which he gives his thoughts on really anything but being highly edited. But he scavenges part, that's why they call him the vulture. Well, I mean, like, a crow is a scavenger, so why don't we just call him the crow? Again, like the f***ing idiot series, each and every one of these episodes almost never fail to disappoint me and always have some sort of charm in them that make every each and every one of these episodes great. And last but not least, on Fridays, he releases a welcome to skit. He basically comes up with a story and will make a video about it using these little weird f Stop mansplaining to me, you privileged f Privileged? What do you on about? Look who I'm friends with! Wayne watch keep falling on my head. And just like the guy who tweeted, oh hey look, I found a nickel. He's only made two of these, but from the skits he's made, he hasn't made a skit that has disappointed me. He did tweet out a screenshot of a new series, but nothing new has came up due to his inactivity on social media in general. He actually used to have a bunch of videos made last year. Sadly, he did delete all of them as he started over his channel, and judging from his long hiatus, he may look like he might start over his channel again or something. The reason why I bring this up is because I remember actually watching a couple of his videos, and then one day I was like, 
Hey, what the hell was that one channel name again? But here we are near the end of 2017, and its content is still enjoyable to watch and hasn't disappointed me. Now that's just one YouTuber. We got 11 more to go. Oh boy, I better start sending some all-nighters now. At this point in time, I don't really watch many gaming channels. I've once said that Nerdcube was my favorite YouTuber, but as I started to get more on YouTube, I just started to watch him less and less. It's great seeing him be my favorite YouTuber for a couple years, but there's another gaming YouTuber that I sure do love watching a lot. He's sadly no longer active, but no matter what, I still enjoy his content at any time. This guy is Ma Tomato. He was mainly known for his Minecraft videos, and fun fact, he was the guy that inspired me to speed up the music in my Minecraft videos when I used to do Minecraft Let's Plays. Maybe I might have been inspired too much. 13 slime balls, that's actually pretty good. Now that means- Oh boy, I don't even know what I'm gonna build the case around it with. I don't wanna have to mine a billion stacks of glass. It's been me just falling like every four milliseconds or something. Next on the list. Hmm, let's see. Uh, okay, um, um... Okay, 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 I think that's enough for showing today. He did other games like The Binding of Isaac, Toontown Rewritten, but he was mainly known for Minecraft. In fact, I'll be honest, the main reason I found out about his channel was because of his Minecraft Let's Play. I remember when he did his Let's Plays, I would always wait to see what more would he do in his Minecraft Let's Plays. His humor was always spot on. The sarcasm he had in his videos just made me want to keep on watching his videos more and more, and it never failed to disappoint me. You know, do it in the corner, and mine all the way down into a pile of lava. I am also going to put iron in this uh, ender chest because it seems lately that I need a lot of iron and I keep forgetting it and I keep having to run like a billion miles back to where I need to be. However, he did come to a stopping point and quitted his Minecraft series overall. However, he did create a new channel under the same name. On that channel, he played other games that weren't Minecraft, and at that point, I felt something weird about his channel. The humor he once had in his past videos was kinda gone. He wasn't the same Mata Mata that I remembered. I kept watching more of his videos, and I remembered one day, he uploaded a video explaining everything, which all came wrapped up into a conclusion. And also a huge sort of explanation that was due a long time ago as to why, you know, all of this happened, as as to why I was demotivated, and as to why basically everything just sort of didn't work out in any way that it could have possibly worked out to make it any better. <coughs> he later then again went on a huge hiatus and attempted to come back with a new channel called Kabaki, a collaboration channel with a group of his friends from what I remembered, but from what I see, he went back to, on a huge hiatus. His videos are still up if you want to check them out, but he's no longer an active YouTuber anymore. It was sad to see one of my favorite YouTubers go into inactivity, and not having the passion to continue what they started on YouTube, but it was always great to look back at the content that a YouTuber like Matamato has produced throughout the times I've watched his content. Since the dawn of YouTube, there was a genre of videos that were very uncommon, and those were actually found quite stupid to make at the time for a normal person's perspective. But little did they know, it would grow into something that so many people would like. Yeah, that's what's gone into it. But as time came by, I've distanced myself away from Super Mario Logan. And I honestly stopped watching his videos. Now don't get me wrong, it's not that I hate the whole plush video genre. Heck, I'm still working on my two big plush video projects that are taking forever to make. But the great plush channels that were once around have all vanished, which is understandable in their own ways, but oh uh, well. But I've always said to myself that if I were to ever to choose any plush YouTubers to keep watching, it would be Stash Bros. Stash Bros, aka Brian, started on YouTube back in 2009 when there weren't much plush channels around on YouTube. To me, he's like a combination of both Super Mario Logan and Cute Mario Bros content wise. I think I might have made it a little obvious at this point, but. He does Mario plush videos on his channel. His main series on his channel are Mario Luigi Stash Bros, Luigi Time, Stash Shorts, The Mushroom Kingdom Storybook, and a new series coming soon called Luigi's Mansion Lunar Light. But let's talk about each and every one of his series individually. 
Mario and Luigi's Stash Bros was his first series released on his channel. The series is currently being worked on in its third season, which I'm very excited for. Each and every episode always feels like it's a journey to watch through. Sure, the first few episodes may not be the best, but hey, it's his first video. Everyone sucks on their first videos. Even me. Boo! Oh my god! Well, that may not be my first video ever, but this video I made does suck if I'm honest. Throughout the series, there's a lot of adventuring and many scenes where you'll be getting twists and turns and you'll be waiting to see what happens. <laughs> Luigi Time is the most popular series on Stash Bros. The concept of the series is Luigi singing towards a video game or a series of games, mainly Mario games to be specific because, well, it's Mario plush videos. The music on here is very catchy and I'll admit I did sing along to a couple of them. Each episode almost never disappoint me, and it's always a glory to watch them when a new one is released. So far, no new episodes have been released, and while it may be years since the last episode was released, I will still continue to keep on watching his videos. It's quite explanatory. Stash shirts are straight to the point plush videos. There's just not much I can say about them other than that, if you like all of his other videos, then you'll sure love this series. I haven't really watched the series too much as I don't really pay attention to the series. I want to say that it's great, but I can't really say so myself. Although, from my recollection, it's just a story told by a different character every episode. I believe that the series has ended, but if not, then I wouldn't really mind watching another one of these videos. I just probably wouldn't care as much for this series. I know the series still has not yet premiered, but when this series releases, I'm curious to know what Stash Bros would do with this series, as the idea of Luigi's Mansion series has been done. Heck, even I did a Luigi's Mansion series. Judging from the trailer, this looks like it will be one heck of a series, but at this point in time, only time will tell. Overall, with plush videos seeming to be growing and dying, Stash Bros has always been my favorite plush YouTuber to go to. He's been consistent with the quality of his videos and rarely ever disappoints me. Although his upload frequency is very inconsistent as you never know when he'll come back when he takes a huge hiatus. But when he does come back, his videos are always sharper than ever, which makes him my favorite plush YouTuber. This is actually kind of a last minute entry as I just recently found out about this channel. Now let me just remove someone off this list just to include him. There you go, that's better. The minute I saw this channel, I just grabbed my notebook and then started writing things down and what I could say about this YouTuber. This YouTuber is Scott the Waz. To put it simple, he does a lot of video game related videos ranging from reviews to history of video games and other stuff that I don't really pay attention to. But I think what I really like about this channel is his humor. I don't really know how to describe it, but he has his humor in a way where it's random and funny at the same time. He always somehow finds a way to make me laugh, and if you can make me laugh in any way, then you are definitely on the top of my list of favorite YouTubers. His humor in some way is kinda like mine, except he seems to pull it off better than me. Hmm, I wonder why. It's because you suck, and also while you're at it, you should go kill yourself! Oh, maybe I should go kill myself. <laughs> but from what I've seen, he's actually been growing pretty fast according to Social Blade. I actually remember his first video I watched from him, and it was a video on Polybius. After that, well... Hey y'all, Scott here, and it's finally time to put my logic to the test with my brand new advice column. Yeah, he's been quite entertaining to say the least. His character in this video seems like the type of person that would do something insane. I mean, look at that face! You know he's gonna destroy something like, I don't know, a freaking PS2? Yeah, he's definitely gonna grow in the next coming years. Although, one problem I do have is that considering I just discovered his channel quite recent, it's very hard to think of stuff to talk about and- Wait a second. He has a second channel? Well then, this is about to get interesting. So for a while at the time of me scripting this, I never realized he had a second channel up until November 20th. Well then, we've got a bit to cover. His second channel offers a lot of old content that he did back in his old days of YouTube. I guess you can say he's been around on this site for quite some time. Sure, they're not the best quality or anything, but this was at a time when he hasn't even started his current channel that he has. Here, take a look at his old content. A very pickleish shape like that. Then make a little pickle design right here, little bumps. Also, I forgot to mention that the way I found out about his channel was through this Bros Channels tab on YouTube, and I went on Rising Creators, and YouTube just happened to recommend this YouTuber to me. And I'd like to say, thanks YouTube, you were actually helpful in this situation. I've enjoyed Scott's content and what he's had to offer this past month, and I'm glad to keep on watching his content. 
Every video that I keep seeing from him always just somehow feels refreshing. If he continues to grow his channel more and more, he can surely become one of the best YouTubers out in the field. I'm quite amazed about this channel that I'm about to talk about. He's another one of those YouTubers I just recently found out and there's quite a bit to cover. So, who is Company Mad? How the hell did I find out about this YouTuber? Why am I so amazed about the, his content that he's making? And why is he all of a sudden on my favorite YouTubers list? Well, Company Man is a YouTuber that makes videos relating to businesses, mainly on their history and talks about their business in some way. The first video I found out about him was his Kmart video, which talked about the decline of Kmart and how it became, well, whatever the hell it is now. I found his editing to be quite appealing to watch, so I decided to watch more of his content and eventually I subscribed to his channel. He takes a business, big or small, and makes videos on them based on their declines, stuff you didn't know, or a positive video on a company. He basically has many ways to talk about a company and make it into a video. Here's a snippet if you're curious to know what his content is like. Attention Kmart shoppers. Everyone think back to the last time you went to a Kmart. Chances are it wasn't a great experience or it was well over a decade ago. But here is a chart of the number of Kmart stores from 2006 to today. But would you be surprised if you thought this was his first channel? While it is his most popular channel, he has another channel called Basketball's Best in which is his first channel but still has around 6,000 subscribers. He makes basketball related videos if you couldn't tell from the name of his channel, but I'm not too much of a basketball type of person, so if you don't like companies but you like basketball, then I would recommend this channel for you. Nothing really changes between the two channels other than the topic that he's talking about. I advise any team to stay away. The more I think about it, the more Kobe's words ring true. Dwight just doesn't seem to have the mentality of a champion. Wait! You thought I was done now? Nah, psych! There's still one more channel he has, so keep on playing this video. Like, what the hell are you doing here? This isn't the animal documentary channel. This is my channel you're watching. Turn that off. All right, thank you. His last channel he has is called Mike's Thoughts. He makes movie reviews and will eventually upload more stuff on this channel. His editing is still the same, which is what keeps me watching his videos on not only one channel, but two of his channels. Maybe his basketball channel once I get interested in basketball. We have four main characters trying to trap themselves inside a shopping mall. The fact that there's only four characters throughout this movie really helps the viewer care about them. So you may be asking, why is he on this list? Well, to put it simple, his editing may look simple, but the way he puts it together, like his footage, his pictures, music, and etc., really fits in and brings me to keep on watching more of his videos. And I'm very amazed from the work that he's accomplished as he started his channel just nine months ago on his basketball channel with absolute no background in video production. He then later started his Company Man channel back in May and in just about 7 months he went from 0 subscribers to an astonishing over 100,000 subscribers. It's not so common to see small YouTubers grow at that rate. I believe that this YouTuber will reach 1 million subscribers by the end of next year if he continues at this rate as his content is appealing to watch and will keep on attracting more viewers. The Thunder f Striving for something, I don't know. Not many know where the hell that comes from, but for those who do, that is from Nathaniel Bandy back in 2015 when he used that slogan. So, who is Nathaniel Bandy? Nathaniel Bandy is not too small, but not too big of a YouTuber who makes gaming related content, ranging from top 10s, let's plays, reviews, and many more. His upload frequency is actually quite consistent at times where he uploads at least one video a week. He's not anything like me where I upload like once a month or something like that. Now let's talk about his videos. He has made many series throughout his channel lifespan, so we got a lot to cover about each and every of his series. Let's start off with one of his main series. He used to make top 10s once a week on his channel last year, up until from what it seemed like he burned himself out, and he still continues to make top 10s, but not as frequent as he used to. The quality of his top 10s has improved a lot throughout his time span, and is always still refreshing to watch one of his top 10 videos. Now on top of playing all the levels, there's also Toad and 1UP houses, which sadly aren't as interesting as the ones in Mario Bros 3, but the fact that they're included is a nice touch. <laughs> 
He also has a triggered series where he took the triggered meme and made it into a series where he picks a topic and nitpicks the negativity of it and compacts it into a small 5 minute video. The concept is not really anything original but the way he shows it is usually done well. You can always expect one of these videos to have some sort of charm and be entertaining at the same time. Oh, and Sonic Water Levels. They're all bad. Robotnik in his snorkel suit freaks me out. If you for some reason don't like him tearing games or a topic apart, then you have this spin-off series in which he calls the Mind-Blowing series, in which he talks about how something is, well, mind-blowing. This series is usually great to watch, especially when waiting for huge projects that he's working on. There's not much to say other than whenever these videos are released, they've always been consistently well. Now this is one of his series that goes on a hiatus and then comes back, but this is where he takes mainly Mario games and predicts and suggests any new features for the next game coming up. It's quite straight to the point. They're not boring to watch, but he does give out a lot of great opinions in these videos. NB Originals are actually one of my favorite series on his channel. He mainly focuses on video game reviews, and I don't mean just a brief review. He goes in a full in-depth review and talks about anything that draws his attention. These videos will land its quality consistency every time, and not one of these MB originals have disappointed me. You can wall jump, punch, kick, grab, fart, burp fire, set your farts on fire, and run fast. If I were to recommend a series for you to watch from Nathaniel Bandy, it'd be this series. I would recommend for you to watch it, as it's usually highly edited, and there's bound to be something funny in each and every one of these episodes. I remember watching this series before he ended up deleting these videos and moving them to his second channel, which speaking of which, I'll talk about his second channel in a bit, but this series was always entertaining to watch from the first few episodes that I watched of this series. It was great when this series was around, as time went by, not many people seemed to know about this series, but it was a nice little series on his channel at the time. I actually haven't watched this series, but it does work like a Let's Play. It's a little entertaining, but I don't really watch too many Let's Plays, so it changes for me with my thoughts on a certain Let's Play. While I may not like reaction videos, he does do reaction videos, which are... Uh, meh. I mean, he does edit his reaction videos, but there are times where he doesn't edit the videos, which can be quite meh to watch them. Here, they are quite boring. So now that I've covered the majority of his series, he does also have a second channel that I haven't talked about. His second channel used to upload daily Let's Plays up until it started to become inactive and now re-uploads old videos. But while I'm on the topic of gaming videos, he does also live stream both on Twitch and YouTube, which I don't watch his live streams, so I don't really have much to say. Overall, his videos are quite the joy to watch, and I've been watching his videos since 2015, and has been consistent with the quality of his videos. I can't wait for him to keep on growing more and more, and being able to accomplish big things in his career. So what if in an alternative universe, I was not a Thunderbolt, but instead, I was a burrito? Oh, well, never mind, uh, let's go back to being a Thunderbolt. Wait, you can't do that? Can you just at least fix it in editing? You're, no, you're, no, you're not getting paid today. <sighs> Fine, you know, you know what, <sighs> never mind, just, just keep it that way, okay? Anyways, for those who don't know who I'm referencing to, I'm referencing to Alternate History of. He's actually one of those YouTubers I've made a thunder spoofs on last year. A sun shoots out a burst of energy every second and is weak enough to break the barriers of the earth, which is also known as a solar flare. Yeah, that video kind of sucks. You can watch it, but I don't really like watching it myself now looking back. Alternate History Up, or Cody to put it short, does, well, videos relating to alternate history scenarios such as war, politics, anime, whatever this is. Basically, anything that relates to a random scenario, he does a video on. Although the way he does it, he draws characters that look something like this and creates the setting throughout the whole video and makes the video look really well. He also does another type of videos called lore where he takes something that is fiction like the DC Universe and Attack on Titans and makes the video in a way where they're put into the real world into a real scenario. Now you may be thinking that his videos aren't great and that maybe they're boring and all, but here's the thing for these people. They're actually quite entertaining. Here, take a look. Guns, tanks, planes, ships. In World War II, the United States was a military production machine. 
He also has a second channel called Knowledge Hub where he does videos on anything throughout history and gives details on events and occurrences. Kim picked the absolute worst time to launch a communist crusade. Domino theory was a growing fear, the idea that communism liked to spread. Again, they're the same style as his alternate history hub videos, so they're not much of a difference in quality other than that they're two different topics. However, back then, this channel used to be called Geography Hub when he could only cover geography. But as time went on, he changed the name of the channel to do more with the channel and is doing really well on that channel. He's also part of the podcast called So That Happened in which him and a group of friends talk about scenarios and history and stuff. I still haven't yet listened to a full episode, but maybe I'll get to that once I finish scripting this countdown. I always remembered watching him back when he only had a couple hundred thousand subscribers and here he is at 1.4 million subscribers and his content is still the enjoyment to watch. I actually remember the first video I watched from him, which was the what if dinosaurs never went extinct, and looking back at it, it's still a really great video to look at. Sure, it's not Cody's best work or anything, but watching this video brings back so much nostalgia and as it brings me to the days when I first discovered him, and it was like, oh, cool, I'm gonna go watch some more PewDiePie. He may be big on the field of YouTube, but I can't wait for him to see him grow more and more as he progresses. Hey, does anyone remember that I mentioned Emma Blackery as my favorite girl YouTuber back in 2015? Well, she still is my favorite girl YouTuber to this day. So you may be asking, Thunder, how the f*** is Emma Blackery still your favorite girl YouTuber after two more years of YouTube and all the YouTubers that have came and went? Well, to put it simple, she's just really entertaining. Emma Blackery makes comedy sketches, music, she also does live streams, and many more videos on her channel. I'll admit, I found out about her channel through Nerdkeep, but regardless if the majority of her audience likes her channel because of Nerdkeep cameos, I find the content she makes on her own really entertaining to watch. Her humor in her videos is really entertaining and very funny, and throughout her span of making videos, there's hardly any of them that disappoint me. Heck, she even does the best to interact with her viewers by making live streams on her YouTube, as you don't see many people with millions of subscribers who interact with their viewers, or if anything, talk to their viewers. Thunder, you're one to talk. You don't even interact with anyone on YouTube, you f tard. You're right, I don't. Dang, I'm a horrible person. How could this happen to me? I made my mistakes, got nowhere to run. The night goes on as I'm fading away. Considering she produces both sketches, music, vlogs, and has a second channel in which she talks about her stuff, let's scramble through each and every of her types of videos. Her sketches are usually funny and entertaining to watch. To sum it up, this was another one of the reasons I ended up subscribing to her. She just fit the humor I liked and she always never failed to disappoint when she produces these videos. Knock knock, who's there? It's me, the OG! The one that made you famous because of my comedy! For Fifty Shades of Grey to the philosopher's butt! You're a comedian, bitch! Stop being something that you're not! Look at all the most viewed! Where's your songs in- I've actually not listened to her music much up until now. From a first impression, I can tell that she's really trying. Her music's alright, it's not my favorite to listen to, but I can tell that from her passion and the work she puts into her music, she's giving everything she can. To break your hold on me, but we still talk every day. Don't we? She actually used to do vlogs, believe it or not. She used to compile hours worth of what happens in her daily life, and while I wouldn't be able to watch the full video considering how each and every video was about an hour long, you'd always have plenty of video to go through. One thing I will say that she doesn't do in her vlogs as much is the clickbait. Yes, she made clickbait in her other videos, but it's more common to clickbait in vlogs. You'll see vlogs like, I bought my first house, not clickbait. Wait, what the f***? I bought my first house? Wait, what? Emma's vlogs aren't like that. If anything, if she was just doing vlogs like someone like Lance Stewart, she probably wouldn't survive so long. Actually, speaking of vlogs, she has another channel called Vloggery where she rambles and talks about stuff that interests her. I don't really check on this channel too much, but I will say that if you do like her content and you want more in your daily routine, then check this channel out as she will provide you with more videos more frequently. In conclusion, Emma Blackery will always be my favorite girl YouTuber for a long time to come. I mean, it will be hard for her to be my favorite YouTuber overall, but hey, she's quite up high up on my list. While she may have been plateauing with her subscriber count, I always find her entertaining no matter what her subscriber count is.
Hey, does anyone remember Dave Days? For anyone that doesn't know Dave Days, he was a YouTuber who made music videos and most of them were revolving around Miley Cyrus back in the old days of YouTube. Sadly, I wasn't there to experience what it was like to know how amazing it was Dave Days, but I was there when this thing was popular. Hey, it's Fred! I know it may seem weird that I like a YouTuber when they're not even at their prime, but hey, that's just you. I've recently started enjoying the music that Dave Days has produced and I've listened to his music way too much. One of my favorites is Right For Me. I don't know why, but it's just stuck to in my head whenever I, I started to hear this music. Here, I'll play a snippet. This love came so quickly No one said it would be easy I constantly can't stop hearing his music as he's sometimes one of the reasons I don't get videos done because I'm so distracted at listening to his music and singing along. This has been going on Each second I look you're gone You're not calling Giving up's not easy it's hard enough to say as much as I make believe. But enough talking about his original music, what other videos does he make? Well, besides his own music he produces, he does a lot of music related videos. To put it simply, he does covers, parodies, and many more different types of videos relating to music. You would not believe your eyes if 10 million home supplies appeared and taught me how to live. By far, his original music is what brings me to his channel. Sure, he may not be able to produce as much music, but hey, the music he has now is holding up. He also does go on tours, which I've never been on any of his, but if I did, I'm sure I would have fun going there. But at this moment, I can't because I'm making this video. Despite the fact Dave is no longer in his heydays, I still tune in to listen to his new music. He's the one that inspired me to make a certain video, which you guys will see very soon. But other than that, Dave Days is the YouTuber not only do I watch, but I listen to in whatever mood I am. Hey Thunder, didn't you say you were gonna make a cover on the Dave Days music? Wait, what the hell are you doing here? You're only supposed to be in Thunder Compares and Reviews, not these types of videos. Yeah Thunder, you said before starting this video you would make a video to one of Dave's music videos. We're doing this cover whether you like it or not. Hit it guys! Wait, I'm not ready! Alright, now let's see who's up next on this countdown. Ha! Yay! I hate everything. No, I mean the channel I hate everything. No, but put that away. That's for a different video. The channel I hate everything is known for making videos hating on, well, anything or everything. I mean, it's plain obvious judging from his name. I'll call him IHE for now considering it may get weird later on calling him I hate everything. But IHE's main series is I hate where he picks a topic and rants about it for, I don't know, about 20 years maybe? Can you even imagine what trailers are going to be like in the future? Bwah, they came from outer space. Bwah, bwah, bwah. Give us your money, China. Bwah, bwah, bwah. Give us your money, dumbasses. Bwah, bwah, bwah. Transformers 17, the revenge of the war of the kingdom of the crystal skull of the attack of the dark side of the rebellion and the revelation of the you'll give us your money anyway, fuck you. He also has a ton of other series, but I'll get to them in a bit. The consistent quality of his videos have always been great and there's rarely ever a bad IHE video. If not, there's probably not even a bad IHE video besides his old videos. I remember back in 2015 when I found out about his channel towards the whole reaction videos drama and I was like, wow, this guy's really interesting. Let's see what other videos he has on his channel. Heck, I even remember when he was one of the YouTubers that I made a spoof on last year on my Thunder Spoofs week. Remember like seven months ago when this video called I hate reaction videos was made? Well, I kind of have a confession to make about prank channels. Granted, it wasn't the best spoof in any way and it was also horrible now looking back, but that's just to show how long I've known about this YouTuber's existence. Even though he doesn't know I exist. Notice me, Poppy. 
He also is part of the podcast called The Jarcast, where he hangs out with a group of his friends and they just talk about stuff. Yeah, I mean, I play some Minecraft. Want to make Minecraft machine? Now, Alex, your voice had broken by then. Want to make a Minecraft machine? And we were all like, yeah. <laughs> In fact, that's what I'm listening to right now uh, while I'm making this video. Now, don't worry, he doesn't just have a series where he just hates stuff because God knows what the human race is capable of. But he also has a few other series on his channel. He has an I Love series, ironically, which he's only picked one topic about what he loves. Like I've done my research, I've read why people like it, I've read why people don't. And then using that information, I've come to my own conclusion, and my conclusion is that I fucking like it. He also has another series called The Search for the Worst, where he picks out a movie and he critiques and bashes the movie into pieces. But my point is, how these companies are allowed to get away with this level of counterfeiting is, is flooring to me. Especially when they have the fucking balls to go up against one of the most powerful companies on the planet. Disney. Once he's done tearing a movie apart, he then makes a commentary slash reaction video to the movie and edits it together in a way where it's funny and entertaining at the same time. See, this is interesting because the first movie was so bare bones it was hard to well, there's even so say much anything. shit going on. But this has the opposite problem where <laughs> well, but, so know. much shit is going on. You like. Mm -hmm. But then again, if you don't like the idea of him bashing things, then he also has another series called The Quest for the Best, where he picks out movies that he thinks are great and talks about the movies. It's a similar story here. It's a group of people that are on their way to a planet. Things happen, aliens get involved. You you can see where this is going. And, and the simplicity of that plot does make it sound very alluring. It makes it sound interesting. A couple of my favorite IHE videos are I Hate School and I Hate Movie Slash Game Trailers, mainly because of how he brings out his points in a very funny and random way. I honestly don't know how it's random, but usually humor like IHE can make me laugh and think to myself, wow, ha! But in all honesty, I still continue to watch his videos as much as possible. I just haven't been watching his videos recently because of how I have this piece of project in the way. Actually, come to think of it, I haven't really been watching much of my favorite YouTubers as much because of this project. SHIT! This YouTuber is one of these YouTubers that have been making content before YouTube even started. Yup, that's right, he even made his own documentary on how it all started for him. But as much as I want to focus on that, let's focus on the content that he has for us now. Cinemassacre is very well known from one specific character that's been around for years on this site. Yep, it's the Angry Video Game Nerd. It's actually a quite funny story on how I ended up liking this YouTuber. So for those who don't know, I used to like the Irate Gamer back in 2015, and I'd always have a friend who would always tell me, hey, you should watch the Angry Video Game Nerd, and I was like, nah. But around February 2016, I actually gave it a shot on trying to watch a couple of his videos, and here I was thinking, what the fuck have I been missing out on? And ever since 2016, I've started to watch as many AVGN episodes, and heck, I even made a review on his Mega Man episode. Wow, that's kind of weird, come to think about it. To put it simple, the Angry Video Game Nerd episodes have always been entertaining me. He's been on a roll recently with uploading these AVGN episodes frequently, so for anyone who's been wanting AVGN episodes more frequently and are waiting, well, you got quite a few videos to catch up on. But I think it's very well clear that I love watching the AVGN episodes. I actually even took the time to watch the AVGN movie. I haven't finished the movie yet because I've been so f***ing busy working on this countdown. For anyone who hasn't seen that nerd, I suggest checking this short clip from an episode because, well, you've been missing out quite a lot. I know it's fake or choreographed or whatever, but how do you fake landing on somebody with 300 pounds of man ass? They were just flying through the air and just smashing each other with steel chairs and all that shit. But the nerd or James also makes other content. Let's see what other videos he makes on his channel. This is another one of his most popular series on his channel. While the series may have ended, it's still entertaining to look back and see what he's created for this series. For those who don't know what board games is, well, the name speaks for itself. Think of it as the nerd, but with board games. You put the tornado on the mountain, do it three times. Any more than three times is way too much, because this thing will go flying and it'll kill somebody, you'll poke your eye out and die. Again, I did miss out when board games was around, but if he does ever come back for board games, I will make sure I won't miss out for that. With this series, he hangs out with Mike and plays some video games. This is basically your generic gaming video, so if you have some time to spare, then I suggest watching this series. There's also series like Mike and Ryan, which are the same concept but with different person. You also have Mike and Ryan Talks, which is basically talking about gaming news, so it's nothing really to expand on. 
We know off the bat that he makes a lot of gaming related content, but he also has his fair share of movie content. He makes movie reviews and all sorts of videos relating to movies. So if you love movies and games, well, I think I found your spot here because he does quite a lot of them frequently. For those who weren't around on his channel from last year and the years passed on, every October he would do a marathon called Monster Madness where he would go for 31 days of reviewing horror films. So if you're interested in watching some horror movie reviews, then go back in time and watch some Monster Bandits because I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy them. If Boy James isn't around, then I'd say that this series is another one of his most popular. He takes anything and makes it into a short rant, they're straight to the point and I've watched every single one of these episodes. Now they don't come out as frequent, but when they do, they always have the enjoyment that the last video left off on. And last, if you're looking for music and you're thinking, Thunder, does he make any music content? Well, today's your lucky day because he also has his fair share of videos relating to music. Basically, he has lists of music and recommends some music for you to listen to. It's quite straight to the point. Although, I haven't really seen many of these videos being uploaded, but I'm sure with all the content he's made on his channel, you'll find something big you'll like. Now, he also makes some short films, but they're quite widespread, so don't expect short films to come out as frequent, but he has them around on his channel. I'm glad to say that in about less than two months, I've watched his channel for two years. I was in the mindset of, I'll get around to this YouTuber in the deep future, but I'm glad I came here soon enough because James makes some amazing content and I can't wait to see what he has in store for the future. Yeah, f this shit. I can't draw anything. As you know, that was me drawing a certain character. You want to know who that was? It was PewDiePie! Um, no. You are far away from the answer. That, guys, was The Odd Ones Out. The Odd Ones Out has for a while been growing at a really fast rate. He was last year at around 2 million subscribers and is now at 5 million subscribers? Holy sh! That's quite the improvement in just one year alone. Heck, he even appeared on Teens React. Once you appear on a Fine Bros series, you're basically known as one of the big boys on YouTube. But for those who don't know, James, also known as the Out Ones Out, didn't actually start on YouTube, but he actually started on Tumblr. He was making comics for that time, and once he turned to YouTube, he took a blast. He still makes comics on Tumblr, but now he's mainly known on YouTube. So what does he do on YouTube that makes him really popular? Well, he tells life stories. Okay, maybe I need to explain a bit more. You see, he creates his videos in a way where he uses his drawing skills like he does on his comics and creates the characters and background on paint tool side and edits them together in a way where they're really funny and entertaining to watch. His upload frequency tends to be once or twice a month, but it is quite understandable as these types of videos he makes aren't so easy to make. Here, take a peek at his videos if you've not. But even though you won't be able to afford college at a minimum wage job, every penny helps because college is important. Except in my case, I dropped out of college. School is for NERDS! What I really like about this YouTuber is that people that do similar content to him, he actually makes cameos in their videos. A big example is Jaden Animations. He once appeared on a video of Jaden, and that did boost up her subscribers quite a bit. Also, and if you can't get enough of James, he also has a merch store. I personally haven't bought anything from his store. YouTube merch is for NERDS! He doesn't have any other series that he does, nor does he work on a second YouTube channel. He is by far the most subscribed YouTuber on my list. I've been watching his videos since he's uploaded the job interviews video, which is dang, that was quite a long while. Overall, the Odd Ones Out has always never disappointed me when he releases his traditional videos. He takes storytime channels to a whole different level, and he makes them in a way where they're highly edited and entertaining. I wouldn't be too surprised if he gets a diamond play button next year because the quality of his videos have always been consistent and never fails to be good. <laughs> 